why do women tell men to go to therapy, but they never go to therapy themselves? This is mind-boggling to most men who go through the pain of rejection and failure at some point in their lives. It's inevitable, but just like a phoenix, men come back stronger than ever before. What about women then? You can take a guess, but I'll show you in a second. You see, we live in a time when corny self-development phrases are the norm, but no woman really does the work to improve herself. That is, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, but who does the average woman hang out with? Her hoe friends who just want to turn her into another member of the hoe gang. This and not men with standards are the real cause behind women's regrets after the wall hits harder than losing a loved one. Overshare coming. <laughs> it was three years ago today that I went outside of my marriage to get laid because I hadn't been laid in a year. Why she look like the lion from the uh, from the Wizard of Oz? And ladies and gentlemen, women need sex too. Uh, we want it, I think, probably as much as men do, but we're just so used to mediocrity that we're like, f*** it. It's not worth the time and effort and energy. But it is worth the time and effort and energy if your man is giving it back to you, if you feel wanted and desired, if you feel like a god. Woman, you are way too old for this shit. Goddess. Um, when I feel like that with my man, I'm basically... Okay, which man are you talking about? Are you talking about the one you cheated on with, or the one you cheated with? A slut. Or are you cheated <laughs> a very happy slut. <laughs> You're way too whole, old to be a happy slut, I'm telling you. Ladies, is this where, this is where you guys are following advice from. In the this is the delusion of modern women. Even in a marriage setting, they do whatever they can to find attention and dicks somewhere else. Female liberation, they said. Disgusting. In today's video, we're delving into modern women hitting the wall hard, and especially why they can't find Prince Charming after that. Stick around, because I'm sure you're going to love this one. But before we go any further, let me share the comment of the day. Shout out to Craps Malloy 7273. He said, Her, I am the table. Me, may I be excused? Now, that's a telltale sign of entitled and a clear sign to run in the opposite direction. Well done. Please don't forget to reach out to us by email to claim your $5 for that comment of the day. As usual, guys, I'll pick one comment from each video. It may be the funniest, the most liked, or one that touched me. So don't forget to leave a comment, and you may be our next winner. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons too, as it helps a lot. And now, back to the video. Embrace your masculinity. First, let's go through the minds of modern women during their prime. The 20s beckon with an irresistible promise. A promise of exploration, self-discovery, and a thrill of solid independence. Also, for them, it's a period when societal expectations and constraints seem to loosen their grip, allowing young women to step into a world of endless possibilities. This era is characterized by the embrace of newfound freedom, a chance to mold life's trajectory according to personal desires and aspiration. Nah, that's cap. What they really mean is something else. The politically correct narrative is so prominent that they'll hardly admit that what they mean is indulging in promiscuous behaviors, getting ran through by Chad and or Tyrone, and on top of that, doing drugs, partying, and all that stuff that men find disgusting. Yeah, hot chicks during their prime might become part of gangbangs, drink tons of liquor, and do nasty stuff, but hey, when it's time to settle down, they'll justify it all by saying that everything they did is in the past. 9 out of 10 times, the enigma of a woman's sexual past comes up, a puzzle that has perplexed many a curious mind. Why the secrecy, you ask? Well, let's venture into the labyrinth of societal norms, judgments, and yes, a dash of hypocrisy. 
Buckle up, because this ride takes us through the territory of relationships, perceptions, and the notion of a right number. Picture this, a woman keeping the veil over her number of past partners. Like, really, why do you need to hide if women do not care about so-called male insecurities? It's like a magician guarding the secret to their most impressive trick. Why is she so cautious? The answer is surprisingly simple. Fear. Fear of judgment, to be precise. Women often hesitate to reveal their body count because they're anxious about the repercussions. Why? Because in this arena, numbers have the power to label and categorize, and rightfully so. More on that in a second. There's a sort of zone of sexual partners where there's no universally accepted just right, or rather, that number is preferably zero. Yes, please, men don't want a woman with a high body count no matter how skilled she is in bed. Men want wifeys, not hoes, but since wifeys are scars, men just go their own way. Having too few partners, or even better, none, is what men really want in a woman. On the flip side, having too many could lead to the dreaded slut label being hurled in her direction. It's like walking on a tightrope stretched across a chasm of judgment. The irony. You can't ask women about their sexual past, but they want to see your bank account? Which takes us to the epitome of hypocrisy. Ever noticed how disclosing financial matters is often treated with caution and privacy? It's a dance of whether to reveal the zeros in your paycheck or keep it under wraps. But why should it be any different from telling the number of intimate partners? After all, just as he's expected to share his fat bank account, shouldn't women have no qualms about showing their body counts? Ah, uh, the delicate balance of double standards. But let's face it, men care about a woman's past, while women care about a man's future. Suck it, money in the past. You gonna take him seriously? <laughs> that's, no. That's, there you no. Go. No, no, I don't think no. She said that. I don't know. Nope. See, what you guys perfectly illustrated just now, mm -hmm. once again, trap card. That's you triggered no. my trap card! Is that women only want their past accepted when it's a female, but if it's a male, you guys want to go ahead. Shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you're doing whole like, shit. Yeah, he's doing whole shit. Whole shit and not gay shit is different. He can hold. He can't like, re-ask the question. But I'm not gonna have him suck another man's balls and out here kissing but that's, another but pussy. But hold on, hold on. Just like, yeah. just like you, have that disgust that he's sucking for money. Because that, that's what it comes down to is disgust. Yeah. Right. That's how men feel about girls that are hoes. Why is it that? What we care about, about the past, nah, bro, you should be able to accept it. Don't worry about that 400 credit score, man, fuck that shit. But when the guy comes in with a 400 credit score, nah, nah, like, bro, give that nigga 20% interest rate, fuck that, we ain't accepting it. But we should accept the woman's past. Please explain that to me. Hold up. <laughs> it's funny, because the argument- All right, let's say you get with a guy and he's a musician as well. Your dream man, right? Attractive, makes money, takes care of you, all that. And you guys go on a five year anniversary trip to where you guys met in, let's say, Los Angeles. And he gets down on one knee and proposes to you. And you're like, damn. And then after he proposes to you, you end up going through his phone. And you're, you know, it's the best day of your life. And you go through his phone and you find out that he fucked 10 in a porno uh, five years ago. Are you going to go ahead and call up that wedding with that dream man? I wouldn't be oblivious for five years, but I'll say if it was five years in deep, then no, I'm not going to care. But oh, I'm talking about offer up okay. Now let's switch it around the other way. Let's say he finds a video of you fucking five. Oh. You think he's going to stick with you? Mm. Hell no. So, <laughs> hell hell no. no. Women right, in general, no. hold on. Women in general don't care about a man's sexual past. Men, however, do care about a woman's sexual past. Let's break this thing down further because it's funny to see why women want to hide their pasts so badly. Beyond the surface of having their fun lies a more profound pursuit, the chase for heart-pounding thrills. It's not merely about wrapping dazzling outfits and dancing under neon lights, it's about the exhilaration of stepping into uncharted territories. Women are all about the pursuit of male attention. That's why they dress up, go to clubs, and even get VIP treatment, even if they don't even have a single dollar under their name. Picture this, a parade of women adorned in their finest party attire, stepping into the vibrant world of clubs and intoxication. 
It's not just a scene, it's an epic saga where the heart of hedonism beats in rhythm with every bass drop. And in this vortex of sensations, the allure is undeniable. The quest is not for enlightenment, but for those precious memories that are hastily captured before the sun rises. Yeah, memories of getting banged by Big Chad while Mr. Wright is always there waiting for his turn. But wait, there's more. As the music pounds and neon lights paint a kaleidoscope of colors, behold the grand prize, male attention. Yes, because what could be more fulfilling than being the center of attention? The men gaze, they approach, and the ego swells like a balloon filled with self-gratification. It's not about genuine connection, it's about the chase, the conquest, and the intoxicating power of being desired. Women don't want all men, they want the attention of all men, and just the dicks of a small minority who, surprise, all happen to be abusers and guys with no emotional awareness. Really. And now, what about the men? Behold the fleeting connections, the ones who step into the spotlight for a moment, offering promises that shimmer like mirages in the desert. They're drawn by the energy, the allure, and the promise of adventure. These connections are like shooting stars, bright, dazzling, and gone in the blink of an eye. Also, these women pair the parties with careers and making money, which is something men are not even attracted to. Men want fertile, fit, feminine, friendly women, not boss babes who hit the club every weekend and brag about how much they don't need men, until they do because children are not made without sperm. Oh. But that's not all. The nice guys who promise more, a deeper bond, perhaps even love, are kicked to the curb or put in the friend zone. And now, let's pause for a moment of contemplation. As the curtains rise, a curious spectacle unfolds. After decreasing their value, women seek the apex of masculinity, the Mr. Perfects, the high-value individuals who've painstakingly built empires, accumulated wealth, and polished their social status. And, more often than not, they want Mr. Right, not an average Joe. These are the ones who've ticked all the boxes on the list of aspirations. But wait, let's rewind for a moment. Wasn't there a chapter before this pursuit of perfection? Ah, yes. The chapter where drugs and sucking dicks took center stage, the nights of partying, the embraces of vices, and the hunt for fleeting male attention. It's almost as if the plot thickens and reveals a twist. A twist where the protagonists indulge in all the things Mr. Perfect might frown upon. And now, as we ponder this paradox, a question emerges. What values are on offer? It's almost poetic. The woman who chased the thrill of the moment, who reveled in the haze of substances, now seeks partners who offer what they themselves haven't fully embraced. It's like searching for a gourmet meal after gorging on fast food. The irony is too obvious. When do you think you're gonna hit your wall realistically? Oh, like I literally have glowed up every single year. Like every month I get hotter, so I don't believe in a wall what do you I think mean that's wall? probably like 55 okay. what do you mean wall it's all Explain mentality to me you like mean unfortunately wall. like when you're hot you get so much more power it sucks but it's the truth wall as in fertility window dies down your looks fade stuff like that okay I feel like 37 almost 40 I feel like the stigma is like 30 it's like when girls are supposed to be like uh, well, like you have I to settle woman, down like I don't base my worth on my fertility so I think that probably like 60 even 70 one could argue that a woman's most prized possession is her ability to reproduce though um, because I have a successful job <laughs> in the business intelligence industry and I make my own money and my happiness doesn't stem from having children. After all that past and all those things that make a woman less valuable, how come they want top tier men? Another thing that gets men messed up is something simple. Not just her past, but her need for more male validation and her espionage on exes. Yes. You heard that right, if she got alpha widowed or fucked very well by another man, she'd likely spy on him. You see, in the ever evolving landscape of modern relationships, a curious situation emerges, one that showcases a stark contrast between the sought after attributes individuals desire in their partners and the actions they themselves engage in. 
It's a narrative that adds an intriguing layer to the complex tapestry of human connections, shedding light on the divergence between aspirations and actualities. The concept of an ideal partner, I'm talking about Mr. Right, of course, encapsulates a set of attributes that mirror societal ideals. Financial success, a sculpted physique, an enviable social status, and even six inches of dick, if not more. While you're supposed to accept her come depository past, of course. Anyway, this archetype, a blend of cultural expectations and personal desires, has perpetuated the age-old quest for a near-perfect companion, a pursuit laden with hopes, dreams, and a touch of naivety. However, within this quest for an epitome, a plot twist surfaces, an exploration of the subtle art of digital surveillance as if she was the FBI. But how dare you talk to other women? What a clown world. The realm of social media becomes a stage upon which modern women navigate the lives of their past dudes, delving into digital archives that might hold the key to nostalgia, curiosity, or something more profound like them remembering their dicks and their skills in the bedroom. All the while saying that they're loyal to you, and yet the incongruence arises as these actions are juxtaposed against the aspirations for an ideal partner, creating a dissonance that prompts reflection. The astute commentary from relationship experts sheds light on this intricate dance of expectations and actions. It articulates the potential pitfalls of excessive interest in the life of an ex, noting that such behavior can cast a shadow over the potential for new relationships to flourish. The motives behind such actions often trace back to unresolved emotions or unaddressed aspects of present circumstances. But you know what? Men are not out there thinking of solving a woman's emotional problems. Does she expect a man to go to therapy? Cool, but she better go to therapy too instead of blaming you for things she did before you even came into the picture. Hey dolls, thanks for all the tags in this one. Let me see if I can explain psychologically what's going on here. Because our brain thinks if I can keep tabs on something that hurt me, then I will protect myself from being hurt again by knowing what's going on in their lives. What often happens is our brain now creates this habit and this impulse and it becomes an addiction very quickly. Where if I don't look at their life, my body feels like it's suffocating and it needs it, almost like it needs to get a hit. And another thing, every time you do that, then it reminds your body of the hurt it went through six years ago. Because our bodies don't know time, I'm just wondering when you're going to let yourself move on from that. No, no, not excuse it, not justify it, not get over it, but let your body not be reminded on a daily basis the hurt it experienced. In some weird way, our brain thinks, actually, if I can stay close to the person that hurt me most and emotionally attached and know what's going on in their life, I can keep myself safe. Let's work on guarding these bodies, babes, because they've been through a lot. Yeah, those bodies went through a lot, so men are not interested in those used and abused women. It's those women, and not men with their lives together, who gotta go to therapy. You know, good guys definitely have their own standards and choices, but those really exceptional and valuable men? They've got seriously high standards and a bunch of options to choose from. They're into women who embrace their traditional side, radiate femininity, and are at that prime point in their lives. On the flip side, they're not into women who've been through the whole feminist extreme or have a history of being overly promiscuous. They prefer women who are still in their prime and haven't been with a ton of unreliable guys. It's been a thing with guys since the dawn of civilizations, no matter where you look. So there you have it, a simple yet complete exploration into the intriguing world of relationships and the unspoken dynamics that often shape our interactions. When it comes to good guys, those remarkable and valuable men who stand out from the crowd, there's a lot more at play than meets the eye. These smart men don't just have standards, they have standards that are as high as the sky and choices that stretch beyond the horizon. In their pursuit of genuine connections, these remarkable men are drawn to a particular kind of woman, a woman who embraces her traditional side and radiates the beauty of femininity. A rare commodity in the West, I know. They're seeking partners who have reached that prime point in life where authenticity shines through, where experiences, but not other men's dicks, have sculpted character, and where the allure of life is at its peak. However, let's not beat around the bush. The journey to these connections isn't without its twists and turns. 
exceptional men often find themselves steering clear of women who have veered into the realm of feminist extremes or have a history of promiscuity. It's a preference that echoes through the ages, a fundamental understanding that certain values resonate deeply in the realm of partnerships. And speaking of values, these remarkable men don't merely see compatibility, they also yearn for accountability. They're not drawn to women who place blame on other men, including their exes. Instead, they appreciate partners who exhibit the courage to take ownership of their choices and experiences. Men are just tired of being called not enough and a whole bunch of names, while all they do is become better day by day. Sadly for them, when these men are in their prime, the women who rejected them can no longer have access to these guys. They regret their nasty choices and want to do strange narratives like claiming their virginity, as if that was even possible. Stay strong guys, as always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you will get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video guys, till next time.